My name is Harper, and I've been married for two years. My husband and I both work and live in this apartment. One evening, I returned home from work and was preparing dinner when my husband arrived. I smiled at him and asked about his day. Nothing different from normal. How about yours? He replied. Yeah, everything was fine. I believe I feel better when I am accomplishing something. I said, returning to the kitchen to finish cooking. My husband also helped with the cooking. As I cooked, I thought about my father, who lives in the adjacent town. I've been visiting him frequently as he's gotten older. I suggested that he move near us and into a care facility, but he refused, saying he was content with his current situation. I've always been concerned about my father, especially since my mother passed away a few years ago. Recently, he accidentally fell at home and is now in the hospital, receiving palliative care. After dinner, my husband mentioned, Oh yeah, my mom called me again today, and I told her about your father. Oh seriously. I replied reluctantly, feeling uneasy. Sorry, but I thought I should inform her. Do not worry. They understand what they're doing. And if something happens, I will be there for you. My husband reassured me. Despite his words, I had a sense that something was about to happen, which unfortunately came true. Late one night, my mother-in-law and brother-in-law arrived unexpectedly. They entered without saying hello and expressed their condolences about my father. My mother-in-law looked at me sympathetically, and my brother-in-law nodded, saying, I am sorry to hear that. I tried to remain composed, responding, It's fine. But in truth, I just wanted them to leave as soon as possible. My husband and I had just gotten home from work and were exhausted. My brother-in-law sipped the tea I had prepared, making a loud sound, and then immediately turned to me, saying, so, you'll acquire the land rights, correct? Isn't the warehouse in front of the station a wonderful location? My husband and I exchanged short glances, unsure of how to respond. I knew it would happen. That is what I thought. What these people want is my father's land, which I will inherit. They want my dad to go as soon as possible. My mother-in-law smiled unnaturally and remarked, it would be a waste to leave the land as is. That location is ideal for a parking lot. If we convert it into a parking lot, we can make a lot of money. I was practically at a loss for words. But then I said, My father is in the hospital, and it has not yet been decided whether I will inherit the land. I almost scrunched up my face as I said it, but they didn't listen. My mother-in-law and brother-in-law are currently discussing with my husband the advantages of using the LAN as a parking lot. They even showed him specifics about the PC they brought. My brother-in-law used to be a salesperson, so he appears to be good at this sort of stuff. But from the moment I met him, I disliked him because he was condescending and insensitive. My husband described my mother-in-law as a classic toxic parent, she was a homemaker who became addicted to gambling, particularly horse racing and slot machines. She continued wasting money. She never cooked or cleaned well, and she had yelled at my husband every day since he was a child. She also denied his personality and selected which friends he should hang out with and what school he should attend. She seems to get along with my brother-in-law since they are so similar. My mother-in-law still contacts my husband frequently and inquires about everything about him. She frequently comes over to our house and asks him where he went, who he was with, what he was doing, and so on, and will have to stay with her for a while. I assumed I had to put up with it and maintain a positive connection with her because she was my mother-in-law, even if she was like that. But I've realized that it's best if we don't get engaged with each other. I overheard my husband repeat this multiple times. My mother-in-law used to ask me, are you pregnant yet? You must have a problem. Every time I see her, 
She tells me I should quit working and get fertility therapy. She was completely different from my warm-hearted parents, who did not attempt to manage me, and she was an extremely tough person to work with. My mother-in-law values family members according to how valuable they are to her. They left that day after she noticed the look of annoyance on our faces. However, it did not appear that they had abandoned the land. They kept calling us, saying things like, I found a contractor to do the construction work. They kept coming to our house, even though I hadn't received the land. After a while, the police informed me that a car had been parked on the land near the station for a while. I was suspicious and went to investigate it. And what I discovered was a familiar minivan. It was parked in the center of the land. It was my brother-in-law's automobile. I called him and he said, we're close friends, so that shouldn't be a problem and I'm being stingy. He refused to relocate his automobile, claiming it was convenient. My husband repeatedly told him to stop doing it, but he refused to listen. So my husband yelled at him and eventually convinced him to stop, but he did it again a few days later. My mother-in-law unexpectedly barged into our conversation the other day. Geez, we've tried so hard, yet nothing has happened. If only your father could pass away soon. My brother-in-law responded, Yes, that would make that land free. They weren't afraid to tell me that, but my husband couldn't take it and said, Neither of you two has the right to say that. Consider how Harper feels. Go home. They didn't seem to care and kept coming to our residence. It was quite hard for me to cope with them. I couldn't sleep at all, and I felt like I was going insane. A few weeks later, on a cold, windy day, my father died in his sleep. When I last spoke to him, he appeared thin but healthy. I was startled that this happened so quickly, which exacerbated my anguish. My mother-in-law and brother-in-law attended the wake and then swiftly left. My husband and I felt relieved. It's preferable to have crazed individuals swarm around and disrupt the funeral. Following that, we had several quiet days, and I felt relieved for the first time in a long while. After completing the procedures for inheriting the land, I went to inspect it because I had a plan. But what I found was an asphalt paved parking lot nearly full of cars I didn't recognize. For a second, I couldn't believe my eyes and wondered whether I'd been in the wrong location. My mother-in-law and brother-in-law arrived as soon as I called, looking composed and assured. I asked what was going on. You were preoccupied with the burial, so I dashed into a parking lot. We even called a contractor. We were very busy these days. They were patronizing. Apparently, several of the parked automobiles belong to people they know, and they've already signed contracts. Oh no, I never consented to any of that. I was losing my anger and I suppose they couldn't stand it any longer. My mother-in-law remarked, you are my daughter-in-law, so your land is ours. There is no problem. If you relocate the automobiles, I will sue you. You will regret it later. I do not care what happens to you. I was quite irritated at the time. My spouse was also upset, saying, I didn't think you two were so insane. I'm very disappointed. However, my mother-in-law and brother-in-law were in a nice mood. Oh, come on. We will give you a portion of the income. You should show more gratitude to us. Oh, and the construction charge was somewhat pricey. I will bill you later. He was quite aggressive and selfish. Following that, we made repeated attempts to communicate with him and quit parking the automobile but he refused to listen to us at all. My mother-in-law looked at me as if I were insane and said, since you are my daughter-in-law, of course your land is ours. Do you recall how much we have helped you? Then my brother-in-law asked, when are you going to give us the land? We will keep waiting. My mother-in-law even advised us to get divorced. My spouse was frustrated. He did his best to fight back. 
Are you certain you want to do this? You'll regret it. Sometime later, I noticed a nice black automobile sitting in a parking lot. My mother-in-law and brother-in-law hurried there, claiming it was illegally parked. They promptly made a sign that read, Stop illegal parking and move it now. They applied sticky tape to it. My brother-in-law was so upset that he kicked the car's body many times. The kicked portions were splattered with shoe prints and heavily damaged. Then they approached us and remarked, that car must belong to an acquaintance or something. Get the car out of our path right now and charge the owner a fee. And I said, well, you know what? The land is officially in my name and my father donated it to me, so I don't need your commission. Furthermore, it is the vehicle of a valued customer with whom you have a relationship. What? A customer? I explained it. The vehicle belongs to the president of my father-in-law's client. Are you kidding me? My mother and brother-in-law's faces turned pale. It's true. We plan to sell the inherited land to the president's corporation, and we just closed the deal. The president of the company is a friend of my father, I explained. They had discussed selling the land before my father passed away. By the time I finished telling them everything, they were completely panicked. Not only had they used a lot of duct tape on his car, but they had also severely dented it. It wasn't long before the company president called my father-in-law to inform him that his car had been damaged. My father-in-law, who had gone even paler, arrived at the house in a panic. He then turned to my mother-in-law and brother-in-law, saying, you two are completely insane. What did you do? Immediately apologized to the company's president and Harper. Frightened, my mother-in-law and brother-in-law bent and apologized to me while trembling and shivering. I responded, this is no longer a problem I can handle on my own. Thank you. Even if I pardon you, I'm not sure what the president will say. But my brother-in-law asked, See, if only you could do something about it, everything would be ok right? I replied, that is impossible. My mother-in-law added, you must be close to the president. I said, I do not know. That is enough. You created this mess on your own. Besides, I don't know. Their parking lot business plan failed after about a week. In addition to the expense of creating the parking lot, consumers' advance payments had to be refunded in full as a penalty. Of course, they had to pay for the president's car repairs too. So they ended up owing a very large amount of debt, and my mother-in-law and brother-in-law were evicted from their home. As a result, the two of them became enemies, and every time they saw each other, they cursed each other, claiming that it was the other's responsibility that they got themselves into this mess. The sale of the land generated a substantial amount of money, and my spouse and I considered how to spend it. However, we ultimately opted to keep it for the future. By the way, my husband seems pleased that he is no longer associated with my mother-in-law and brother-in-law.